Hi, my name is Thomas Beale. Welcome to part 3 of the ADL Workbench Getting Started tutorial. Now, I haven't actually showed the other parts of the tool, so currently we're looking at the definition, that is the technical, uh, if you like, mathematical definition of what the constraint structure of an archetype is. The description part of the archetype gives you all kinds of interesting metadata, uh, which in OpenAir and 13606 is the same information, so things like purpose, use, misuse, uh, authoring, details, and so on. If we look at a very well-known archetype such as blood pressure, we'll see that there are all kinds of numerous contributors and uh, various, quite a lot of uh, things like keywords, use, misuse, purpose, and so on. So we have the definition, the description. The next thing we can look at is the terminology part of the archetype. If we go back to the archetype definition itself and we turn that codes view on, we'll see, for example, systolic 80004. I could actually jump to that in the terminology tool and I can see uh, the definition of systolic. Now that's just the ar local archetypes view of the definition. If you want to have a proper ontological definition, of course, the archetype doesn't pretend to overtake that role. We can actually see some SNOMED bindings in here of SNOMED codes which have been mapped to those uh, archetype local codes. As a general, uh, in general, we would expect to have uh, numerous SNOMED low ink and other kinds of codes bound to codes defined within archetypes. In any archetype, we can look at the path map that is the extracted path map from the definition. So if we hover over any of these nodes in the definition, we can see those paths appearing in the tool tips. Get rid of the codes there. If we go back to that path map, that is the totality of the possible extracted paths. If you put natural language on, you can see uh, the meaning. So if we wanted to know what the path was for the systolic value, what kind of reference model type it was, dv quantity, we can do all of that. The next tool I'll show is the slots tool. Now you'll remember that in the definition there was, you can see the path here, protocol, the structure, items, device. We can go there and have a look at that. Protocol, the structure, items, device. It's referring to this uh, slot here. Oops. We go back to the slots view and you can see the allowed slots uh, for in fact for all of the paths where slots are defined in this archetype. You'll see uh, client archetypes, that means archetypes that use this archetype. If we were to hit F7, which is the way to compile the entire uh, repository, or alternatively if we click on this compile button, we'll see the whole repository being compiled and some information, for example, these slot maps will uh, be fully populated. Now, after full compilation, you can see uh, which archetypes use this archetype. So, the uh, section vital signs archetype is one of them. Let's have a quick look at the class tool. Anywhere where you can see a class symbol, for instance one of these icons here, also in the uh, Explorer, Archetype Explorer over here, we can decide to view any of those classes. So if I display that class, I've got the instruction class. This view here shows the properties. All of the properties uh, flattened through inheritance. That means the instruction class inheriting from these other classes, care entry, entry and locatable, each of those bringing in uh, a number of other properties. If you want to look at the ancestors inheritance view you can see that uh, and you can even do things for example like choose uh, a different one of those classes, put it in a new tab and look at the descendants of the locatable class for example and you'll see the whole thing. Go back to where we were 
construction class ancestors, that is the parents, descendants, well, not nothing of course. If we happen to have retargeted this class to entry and then looked at the descendants, we would find under entry, care entry, and there's instruction there. So I'll retarget back to instruction. There's also a tab called closure, which gives you a similar view to the archetype definition, but purely for the uh, classes. So now we can look at all of the attributes of a class, including being able to filter in terms of infrastructure properties, runtime properties, and data properties. If we just look at data properties, these are the properties of a class that would make sense normally to archetype. Uh, if you add runtime properties, these are things that are likely to be set by runtime system. You can see workflow ID and guideline ID. These happen to be things defined in the open air uh, reference model. You can expand out and do some interesting things. For example, if we were to choose protocol there, uh, you'll see it's of type item structure. Item structure happens to be an abstract type in the open air reference model. If we were to look at what possible subtypes it would be converted, converted to, the tool actually allows us to do this. So we'll choose item tree, and you'll see item tree has an attribute uh, property called items of type item. Uh, item is more or less the same class as the same named class in 13606. It's also abstract, so you might want to convert it to a, uh, a subtype such as element. Now we can really see what the uh, a realistic concrete structure of the information based on this class might be. Under value, we can see another abstract type, data value, and we might want to try and convert that to a subtype to have a look at it. So let's choose dv quantity, and now we have a tree structure representing the uh, concrete data for this instruction class and with the choices I've just made all the way down to a protocol containing an item tree containing an element containing a quantity. There are further things that we can look at in terms of viewing an archetype uh, which I haven't yet shown. Annotations, most archetypes don't have annotations but if I I'll later go and have a look at the uh, an example archetype that does contain some annotations. We can look at the archetype source uh, in case you want to convince yourself of problems that the tool might be having or just see what's really behind the scenes. Uh, you can also do that by going to an archetype and looking at the uh, source by doing edit source. You can look at an original ADL 1.4 uh, form or the differential form that the tool uses which is with the editor I'm using here in a nicely colorized form and you can read a whole archetype. There are a number of other little tools here uh, so that was source. The serialized flat form of the archetype is a round tripped ADL 1.5 or it could be ADA 1.4 uh, representation of the archetype. You can see that in ADA 1.5, DATL 1.5. DATL's a something like the JSON format used inside OpenAir. It's a bit more regular and powerful than JSON. There's uh, an XML form. We have JSON. Uh, we also have uh, YAML. Lastly we have the validity uh, tab and for archetypes that have errors for them uh, during the compilation for example we can see this one here Bartel has an error there are some other ones with errors here you can see all of those uh, in that tab for the archetype or we can get into the errors tool and explore the full error uh, output of the tool of the compiler by going through this tree and you'll see exactly which errors have been reported. You'll see that errors contain codes like this one here, Vaxit and so on. There are approximately a hundred such codes defined by the open air archetype 
specification. We mentioned that I just mentioned that there was uh, a tool for looking at statistics of an archetype. So if we just choose an archetype here, audiogram, that is the archetype uh, specific single archetype uh, statistics. You can see 44 object nodes, the number of uh, codes, and so on. We have uh, we actually we've also count 80 code bindings. This is bindings to external terminologies. You can have a look in here and see what the breakdown of, uh, for a given class in the reference model, which attributes, i.e. properties, have been uh, archetype, that is constrained, and how many times. So we can see that there are 12 element nodes and only the value, which is to be expected, has been archetyped uh, of the possible attributes. Uh, now, if we look at the repository as a whole, we go back to the catalog tool here you'll see that we've got metrics uh, and also statistics aggregated over all of the archetypes so for example 4,000 object nodes 3,683 AT codes out of uh, 184 valid archetypes we can now go and get some interesting statistics for example we might want to know how often are the various data types used and what, which parts of them are used. If we go and have a look at, uh, let's say, DV proportion, we can see that numerator and denominator have been constrained 14 and 7 times, respectively. DV coded text, defining code, uh, 367 times. Right, well, not everybody is interested in open air all the time, so let's go and have a look at uh, some other repositories. We'll have a quick look at the SIMI repository. This uh, is showing a an early version or archetype, early version of archetypes based on an early version of the SIMI reference model. Uh, what you're seeing here are very early drafts, so that the actual current models probably are some way ahead of this but you can explore these models in the normal way in the Explorer here you'll see the package structure there you'll see it's uh, significantly simplified compared to OpenAir if we were to look at 13606 uh, you would see it's it's even simpler than 13606 however a, a nice easy way to look at it is to just look at the archetypes and we've defined a number of archetypes here uh, for those who don't know what SIMI is just consider this to be a different reference model and some uh, different kinds of archetypes. If I compile this repository, you'll see something interesting. There's an archetype there, body temperature. There are a number of other archetypes, but they've been displayed in a way that makes them look like uh, reference model classes. And these are a new, relatively new theoretical construct called the reference archetype. And they've been classified that way because the source code has been marked in one of the metadata uh, uh, attributes called other details with a model level classifier that says that it's a reference archetype. This is an experimental feature, but it's an interesting one to enable us to look at uh, new types of models and new ways to use archetypes. For completeness, we can go and have a look at the archetypes from a set of archetypes from Brazil uh, from the Mingerais State Health Service and we can compile these. These ones are based on the SEN model so if for example we were to go and have a look at uh, one of these archetypes they're in Portuguese of course you'll see the typical kinds of data types that we expect from the SEN 13606 and the uh, SEN TS14796 data types standard. But in fact, everything else works exactly the same way as we've seen so far. If we add in data properties, we'll be seeing, instead of open air data properties, SEN reference model data properties, and so on. I'll just do one final quick trip to 
a set of archetypes and templates defined based on the open air extract. Uh, so we have an archetype called discharge summary as a templated archetype. A template in ADO 1.4 is just a kind of archetype with some special features. You can go and look, you can see the template icon there is uh, highlighted, so we can go and actually build the template just by clicking on uh, the relevant node there and you'll see that, well I've got it in the flat view there, if you go back to the differential view you'll see a template has uh, a number of other archetypes, there are these archetype IDs uh, and template IDs, so for example a templated clinical information for discharge summary composition. These are what's known as slot fillers. We quickly saw slots uh, in an archetype before. Now we can see the filling of slots by archetypes. If we flatten this structure, we'll see a logical full template for a discharge summary. And you can see all the data points there. Now we can start to imagine what utility these archetypes are for software engineering and systems. If we serialize this, for example, to some form such as XML, JSON, or whatever suits your purpose, then we have what's called an operational template. And this is a fully processable, uh, you can think of it as a giant archetype made up of many, many bits and pieces templated together for a particular purpose, in this case, discharge summary. Finally, I'm just going to go and have a look at some of the uh, other features of archetypes that we can see by viewing the test archetypes because there are no production archetypes for every single possible facility. So I'll just find an archetype that contains some annotations just so we've got some concept of what annotations look like. If we hover over these nodes we can see annotations showing up now on these uh, tree elements. If we go to the annotations tab we'll see these are just test annotations of course so they don't say anything terribly interesting. There's an annotations, uh, a first child archetype that has annotations and you'll see some annotations appearing there and we can go and see both inherited and uh, locally defined annotations. The last thing we'll go and have a look at is bindings. There are a number of archetypes which demonstrate the binding of terminology to archetype nodes. This archetype here is a simplified APGAR score archetype. You can see the tooltip showing there. This tooltip shows the binding of a low ink code to uh, that node. If we go into the terminology view, we well we don't see it there because the bindings that would show up here for uh, these low ink codes are only to directly to uh, individual codes. What we're seeing here uh, is a binding to this path. So that means that that low ink code corresponds to uh, the one minute path, one minute uh, data sample of an APGAR uh, result. If we go and look at this is another version of the uh, APGAR with the full set of data points. We can see the same thing in term bindings with low encodes for each of the various data points on the one minute sample and also on the total we've got a low ink and a SNOMED binding there. Uh, if we look in the terminology we will see both bound codes bound to specific uh, local codes and as I said these are distinct from these codes which are bound to a path. So a code, a low ink code bound to uh, this code here which means absent, no heartbeat, is a code that means just that no matter which sample we're talking about, one minute, two minute, three minute, five minute, whereas this code here uh, corresponds to the one minute heart rate. Now, 
probably in future versions of the tool we'll display those in a slightly more friendly fashion. You can see the total set of bindings in the raw archetype view here. So that's the end of our tour so far. There are quite a few more features to explore in the ADL workbench and soon it will be providing full editing capabilities. However, those interesting features are the subject of future uh, presentations. Thank you for your attention.